So, hi Tom, you are the founder, chairman and CEO of Ponce de Leon Health. It's great to talk to you again. Thank you so much for joining us on Modern Health Span. Thanks, Richard. You know, it's been a pleasure. I've enjoyed our first conversation and I'm looking forward to this one as well. Great. Thanks, Tom. So, could you share something of your personal experience? I believe that you and your family have been taking uh, Rejuvent for a while. So, kind of, how long have you been taking and what can you share about that? Yeah, I'd be happy to answer that. Um, I, I would like to just uh, go back to something I mentioned a little bit earlier about combinations. As I thought about it, I've got a little clarification I'd like to uh, share with you. And so, um, you know, we had experience, as I'd mentioned before, in the animal model about combinations sometimes not working very well together. And, you know, my, my recommendation is always uh, test, 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 uh, because a lot of times um, combinations of compounds don't work the way you think. Just because each one individually has good results doesn't necessarily mean in combination they have uh, good results. And we've seen this in both the animal model and also uh, anecdotally in humans. And so I'm a big advocate of actually using the DNA methylation test to see whether or not what you're doing is actually working well. Um, as I may have mentioned before, the way that Rejuven works is it actually remodels your DNA methylation patterns in your epigenome. And so that then changes uh, cell expression back to a state that typically occurred when you were younger. And so when you're born, your CPG sites, uh, the island sites are all on, if you will, and the repeat sites are all off. And, and as you get older, due to changes in genetics, um, environmental damage, uh, poor lifestyle choices, et cetera, um, change those. What was on then becomes off and what was off then becomes on. And that manifests itself physiologically in what we observe as the process of aging. So we believe, um, as does David Sinclair, that um, drift, epigenetic drift or changes in your epigenome, actually what causes um, aging. And so it's not, it, the reason that DNA methylation is so accurate in determining biologic age and chronologic age, depending upon which test, is that in my opinion, it's a cause, not just simply a very accurate measurement. And so, you know, a lot of people now are taking stacks of, of, uh, of compounds, uh, trying to have a clinical effect on aging. And uh, my suggestion simply is just, just measure it. And so if you can see a change, uh, a re reduction in biologic age by what you're doing, then congratulations. Um, and if you're taking Rejuvent and that helps, then you should send me an email because I'd be very intrigued by what, by what was um, uh, additive in combination. As you, know, as you well know, we're testing as many things as you can possibly imagine. And so if you don't get a good response, you know, if, um, if you're on Rejuvent and you've had no real change in biologic age, uh, sometimes people say, gee, what, you know, what happened? I thought it would, be work, you know, would work better for me. You know, first of all, there is no compound that you can take that 100% of the people actually have a benefit from. And, and so uh, this is no different than that. On the other hand, usually the first question we ask is, do you have the MPHFR gene variant? And then the usual answer is, gee, that's interesting you would ask that question. And so as you probably know, that inhibits or, or limits your ability to absorb uh, vitamin B. And so uh, the good news is if you have the gene variant and you take um, a folate supplement, uh, sub, uh, supplement uh, vitamin B supplement, um, within a few months, you can become a responder. And then the next most common thing, if they are not, uh, if they don't have that gene variant, is, you know, we ask them, what, are, you know, what else are you taking? And we typically will see things like a glucose modulator of some, you know, from some form, you know, that may be affecting it. And we just encourage people to uh, consider dropping it off unless they are, uh, you know, diabetic, of course, and we'd say never do that. Um, but if they aren't, um, then to suggest maybe they try going off of it for a few months and seeing if they become a responder. And uh, a lot of times people have good results doing that. So let me move on to uh, what you were talking about before about my personal responses, unless you have a question. Yeah, so I just have one question, which was how long should people wait before doing kind of the test? Do you have a kind of idea on that? Like six yeah, usually, 
Right. Usually uh, at four months, you can begin to see a change if you are a responder. Um, some people are a little bit slower. Some people are a little you know, faster. But typically, if you want something to show up in a change in a methylation pattern, you know, it takes about four to six months for it to show up. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, so you, you asked me about my uh, personal responses. And so here's where I have to uh, start to speak um, a little legal ease um, in reminding everybody, of course, that supplements are for people who are, are healthy. They're not, they're not designed to help people who are already sick or suffering from a disease because, as you well know, supplements are approved not to treat or cure diseases. And so... Um, the FDA and the FTC consider all kinds of things diseases, so it's very difficult for me to answer that question completely. But I, I will say in the animal model, for example, you know, we saw many interesting physiologic changes, uh, changes in the coat condition of the mice where they didn't lose hair uh, like the control group did as the mice got older. In fact, some that had gray hair turned dark again and the coats were generally shiny. Uh, the whiskers didn't fall out. And so all of these things are, you know, what we would generally view as phenotypes of aging, right? Mm. In the mouse. And, um, you know, if it works the same way in humans, you might anticipate that some of those cosmetic things would also um, be beneficial for taking uh, calcium alpha glutarate. And so, um, as I'd mentioned before, the island sites are the ones that really are for housekeeping. And so as you get older, those tend to turn off, they become methylated and um, Rejuven is able to demethylate those methylated sites. And demethylated is the state of uh, actually when you're born. And so it continues on until an intervention, which could be an environmental factor, poor lifestyle choices, except genetics, you know, tend to turn those uh, genes off over time. And so by turning them back on again, um, it, in the mouse model, it manifested itself in physiologic changes that were very different from the control group. And so I have noticed many of those same things uh, for me personally. So things I can mention that clearly are not diseases, um, you know, would be uh, an increase in energy level and what I call mental acuity. It's the first thing I noticed. Um, I, I have a hard time getting out of first gear in the morning. I'm definitely not a morning person. Um, and so, you know, I take Rejuven in the morning. Um, and I now find that having been on it for about three years, you know, I don't, I don't sleep late anymore. I get up very early. I'm very refreshed and I don't drink coffee, but you know, I, I sort of see similar responses maybe in people who take coffee only. I don't feel like I have to have rejuven or my day is going to be a horrible day. Um, but if I don't take it for three or four days, it begins to get horrible. So for me, it uh, enables me to be uh, very productive very early on. And we have, you know, we have some physicians that advise us and they, you know, they have learned to focus intently when they are doing surgery. And that's one of the first things they notice as well as the ability to really focus um, at the exclusion of almost anything else, um, which they find to be, you know, very intriguing and was similar to when they started uh, uh, residency, you know, many years before. Athletic performance is another thing that um, people notice. Um, weekend warriors and also people who were competitive in college and, and continue to try and be competitive and everything from swimming to running to bicycle, bicycling, as well as even Ironman competition. You know, we've had a few people that have um, contacted us saying that there are times, you know, in a older age group are now, you know, like 10 or 15 minutes better than they were when they were 10 years younger. And so, you know, who knows what else they're doing, you know, that, that maybe uh, they may have done all kinds of things, lost, you know, 20 pounds, who knows, but it is, uh, it is intriguing. And it's a common theme that we have noticed. I would love to do some clinical trials, um, you know, to demonstrate this, but, you know, the trials are expensive and uh, 
when you sell a product for three dollars a day, not thirty dollars a day, you can only afford to run you know so many half million dollar trials. Okay, so th that's what I have experienced, you know, and there are several other things I've noticed, but again, we don't have clinical trials to be able to back those things up, and so I'm not really in a position to elaborate more than I've already done. Okay. You, you have some concrete data on, on ages, on epigenetic age. Is, is that something you can share for yourself? Uh, you know, sure. And so uh, uh, I have been a very good responder, as have been most of the folks in my family, uh, with the exception of my mother, um, who uh, it, it was diabetic. And so uh, type 2 diabetic, I... I suggest that she take berberin and she was able to then um, uh, improve her status to the point where she was no longer a type two diabetic. And since she loves sweets, that to her was um, a revelation, but she was a non-responder with rejuvent. And so eventually I told her, I said, look, mom, if you're willing to just try going off of the berberin for three months and take rejuvent, um, you know, see whether or not it helps. And for her, it made a difference. She became a responder. So um, I think she dropped about 12 years in age, if I remember correctly. My uh, biologic age has reversed about, I think it's about 16 or 17 years. And so um, I've been testing. Uh, I test very frequently because the TRUMI test is, you know, relatively inexpensive, especially compared to blood DNA testing. And so I test frequently and I'm also trying different combinations to see whether or not I can come up with an improved version. Uh, my father also was a very good responder. And so um, we have a paper, it's not ours actually, it's um, Yelena, the CEO of True Me. You know, she, she contacted me about a year or so ago and said, look, you know, we have people who are taking all kinds of things and the only people that are consistently uh, reducing their biologic age are the folks that are on rejuvenate. And she said, I'd like to think about doing a paper. So I said, you know, sure, that, that's, that, that would be fine with us. Anything we can do to be helpful, just let us know. And so finally, um, you know, she got to the point where she had enough data um, where she wanted, um, you know, to publish this paper. And so I, I asked uh, Dr. Kennedy to kind of get involved um, because he's much more familiar with the protocols, the practice, the people uh, involved in publication, also the statistics that are used, et cetera. And that paper uh, should be submitted here shortly. And I believe that it's likely to get published soon. And it will show in a retrospective trial, I mean, because this is looking backwards, uh, so there is no placebo control because it's historic, but a retrospective randomized trial of all of the people who took a DNA methylation test first, and most people don't, frankly, they start taking the product immediately and save the test for later, but that took the test first and then went on the product for about six months uh, and then retested, you know, showed a statistically significant reduction in biologic age. And I don't know exactly how many are gonna wind up in the final paper. Um, everybody that did really well, they dropped out as an outlier, which, I mean, that, that's fine. Um, but the numbers were a whole lot better when they were in. But uh, they, they dropped several people out uh, who were, you know, were very, very good responders. Um, and, uh, they were, they were, and, and they were a lot of people who wouldn't share their data because they just viewed it as, you know, DNA data and they didn't want to share it. But I think there's over 60 uh, people in that now, uh, customers. And so uh, that should be published before too awful long. And that will show a statistically significant reduction in biologic age. And, you know, the people that are, were added just recently also were in it, obviously, during the pandemic the pre-pandemic people scored better uh, and the post-pandemic people didn't score as well, which may have been stress related. I mean, you know, there's, there's no way to know exactly uh, how that would affect this. 
And we're also seeing some effect in the other clinical trials that we're running, um, obviously because of lifestyle changes that people made. But that data is gonna be very intriguing. Um, and I think we'll certainly um, create some interest in the product, hopefully. Yes, it will be very interesting to see that paper when it comes out.